Great to see you again, Dr. Rossi. Uh, it's been a little while, but it's good to see you again. And uh, my name is Galen, and I am an application scientist at uh, CID Bioscience, and my background's in food science. And so we're really excited to talk to you today, Dr. Rossi. And so if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, tell us about your background and how you came to be where you are and why you chose this specific area of research, then we'll get right into the nitty gritty of what you've been doing lately. All right, well, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Lorenzo Rossi, and uh, I'm an assistant professor of plant root biology at the University of Florida. Um, I'm located off campus, so we are on a research station um, on the east coast of Florida, and we um, work a lot on grapefruit and citrus in general, citrus roots, growth and development. And actually it was during my postdoc that my, my PhD was in plant biology. Um, and my, during my, my postdoc, I started working on roots. So our roots of cultivated species react to pollutants. To We, we were doing a lot of heavy metals. We were doing a lot of uh, emerging pollutants such as nanoparticles. And with this, I gained expertise on root growth and development at, under different conditions, environmental conditions. And there was an opening for a plant root biologist here at the University of Florida. And here where I am right now, it's been, been four years now, so I'm, I'm really pleased, I'm happy. And why do root biology on citrus? Because there is a disease that is called citrus greening, we have been dealing with that for almost 15 years now. It came in 2005. It's a bacterium, a bacterium. So, and it lives and replicates inside roots and the vascular system of the phloem of, of the citrus trees. And so, if we can uh, better understand how we can measure root trace, root growth and development, uh, we can we can prolong or we can we can extend the lifespan of HLD, the citrus green affect trees. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about this uh, uh, in our webinar that we did previously for the, the root scanner. Since then, you know, how have things gone? How, how has the work progressed? Have you learned anything new that uh, is, is particularly interesting about citrus greening? Well, we are seeing, uh, so we have a couple of projects on that using the mini rhizotron. One of those projects and it's the one that is more advanced too. This is the third year um, that we are doing this. Is uh, we are seeing the micronutrients, particularly boron and zinc, have an effect on root growth and an effect on the on the citrus greening itself. So they're they're actually I don't want to say antibacterial, but they have an effect on reducing the infection. And so we saw that. Uh, an increased amount of boron and zinc actually have a beneficial effect on, on our roots. And we are, we, are, we are wrapping up their research. I have a graduate student who is about to graduate, so we will see some papers out soon. And, um, and what we did was we were applying different rates of micronutrients, and we were measuring root growth uh, with the mini rhizotron every four months. Mm -hmm. So with this project, uh, and you, so you're mentioning you're using the CI600 root scanner, um, what uh, other technologies were you considering using for this project? Were you considering other project or other technologies? Um, and why, I guess, would you choose to use this tech particular technology with the mini rhizotron system uh, as opposed to other methods of root analysis? So we are using the 602, actually. Oh, the 602, that's right. But um, so we choose this method because it's non-destructive. So as you know better than me, probably measuring root rates in the field is always challenging because you can go with traditional methods. So you can do excavations, you can do um, root, uh, you can dig holes in the field, but they are all destructive. So if you have a commercial growth. It's, it's going to be challenging for you to find a farmer or a producer that would like to go there and excavate roots or kill in trees just to measure root growth and development every like four months. So 
But the mini rises are really, really effective for us because they are non-destructive. They can stay in the soil for a long period of, of time, and you can always put the camera whenever you need to and take pictures. What we are considering now is a little change in the experimental design. So instead of having just one tube per tree, we may want to increase that because we like to have a more um, a full picture of the entire root system. And sometimes with our irrigation system, most of the, groom, or the roots may grow in a direction that is nowhere near the tube. Oh, yeah. So it can be a ease of me sometimes. So we are trying to have more tubes, at least two or three. That's what I'm working on next, next grant. And the other thing is, I think it would be important to have um, better representation, not just of the root system, but also to see what's going on in the upper level of the plants and eventually subflow measurements so we can measure the root if, if the, more roots means that there is more more uh, subflow going there's more flow going um stomatal conductance can be another thing that we are we are willing to see so making more correlation if, if the if the roots are bigger and they're growing better is there something that is correlated to more uh, uptake of nutrients and water more stomatal conductance, so that would be our next uh, level. Yeah, so taking a more holistic approach and getting a big picture of everything that's happening within that uh, that particular tree. So that's really, uh, so you've made these, uh, you know, these discoveries about the micronutrients. Are you planning on continuing the micronutrient study with other micronutrients or are you, what's the next uh, uh, phase of, of, of your study, I suppose? We are still continuing that there is a lot of interest from the industry. Uh, of course, we want to give them um, some guidelines. And at the same time, we need to be careful on what we are saying because, you know, it's my, they're micronutrients. So you don't want to go out on, on, uh, on the extension paper and see a micronutrient with your industry because then you will have all the, all the producer applying this in big quantity. They, they can make it. Yeah. Free. So we need to know the exact amount for different type of cultivars, um, root stock, soil type. And the other thing, I want to see how they are affecting the, the soil. So we, we started a new project with the PhD student, soil microbiome. So are they affecting the microbes? We are, are we seeing change in the microbial community and how this can relate to root growth too? So we have another project we started last year Again, mini run, but also we were doing root growth, but also microbes and microbiome. So that's something we are we, we started last year. So we're still a little bit early. I want to see a couple of seasons. Yeah. See where we are going with this. Well, that's going to be really interesting to see if that if they're having a, a uh, you know you might be uh, eliminating some of the. Um, bacteria that you don't want to see that's causing the greening, but then you could also be eliminating a lot of the good bacteria that you... Uh, that's what we were... I want to make sure we are not changing too much the rhizosphere ecology, so the big picture, because in, in the long term you may fix the problem, but you may create like 300 moles. Right. <laughs> so it's about the balance. So it's really great to see that you guys are already thinking ahead about that and making sure that you're not going to, you know, it could fix greening in the short term, but maybe it'll come back and maybe because you're just completely sterilizing your soil and there's nothing left in there. Uh, so, yeah, that's great to see. Um, so any other uh, really uh, interesting you know, aspects of this project or other projects that you're that you're going to start working on soon that you want to talk about? Um, we are using mini rhizotrum for another project that's on peaches. So... With the, with the decline of the citrus industry here in Florida, we saw a lot of interest in the specialty crops. And peaches is one of those crops. Um, the main idea is we can beat the market a couple of weeks because, you know, when you have Georgia and South Carolina, they will eat the market in the southern region. I mean, there is no interest in Florida peaches anymore. Mm -hmm. But we have that window, a couple of weeks, sometimes three weeks. So it took it's most, mostly a month in which we can sell uh, Florida peaches. So we are we are working on that. And th what was the problem there? So 
in Florida, we have two or oh, three types of soils. So we have uh, soils that are really deep and the drainage is really good in the central region of Florida. But also we have four soils in the coastal area that they have a clay, a clay R pan that is really, really hard to break and they have flooding problem. So we are trying to see and we want to, uh, we are working with breeders to have rootstocks that can survive well in, in our soil, coastal soil with a lot of flooding. So we selected a couple of uh, new rootstocks from uh, some selection. We're working with breeders in main campus. And I have a PhD student that we, 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 are, we planted those trees in our soils and we want to see with the mini rice if the root system is shallow or if it goes too deep. So root system architecture in this case to see if we can breed uh, a good rootstock for our soil here in the coastal region. Yeah. So studying, as, I mean, from just from the year two studies that you're doing, a lot of really big commercial impacts just from looking at these roots, um, you know, with, with trying to mitigate the greening and then also trying to, you know, uh, increase the, uh, um, the or, or get an early start on the Florida peach uh, uh, harvest. So that's really, honestly, um, really insightful that these, these tools, these research tools are going to be impacting things on the more commercial level. Um, so that's great to hear. Yeah, so uh, that's really all um, I have uh, questions for you for today. If there's anything else that you think that you want the public to know about, projects that you're working on, um, or if you have uh, information about where they can see your research or, or see what you're working on next, um, then let us know. And uh, we can also post links to that as well uh, when we go to post this interview. But yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Rossi. I really appreciate your time. It was uh, great to catch up with you. Glad to see the research, uh, the research is progressing really well. And uh, yeah, I hope that we can hear more from you in the next you know, year. We'll see some even more advancements with the micronutrient study. So that's really cool. And I'm really excited to see more about that. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Rossi. Have a great day. You too.